In this Revit video, I'm going to talk about wall location lines. When you go to insert a wall, so if you pick wall and you know I'm going to draw uh, with a line for example, up at the top in the contextual ribbon here, you'll see that we have the wall location line. And it defaults at wall center line, but you'll see that there are actually six options uh, to put the wall in. So if I go wall center line and I start to draw, it's drawing at the center of that particular wall type. I'm just going to delete that wall. Okay, so I have a uh, little drawing here that shows you what that's really talking about. So here, uh, this would be a basic wall exterior, the brick on CMU wall type. If I click the properties palette in the type selector, you'll see that there's a variety of different wall types. So I have brick on CMU. That's an exterior wall. We also have foundation walls, the generic walls uh, that don't have um, any actual structural elements to them. So there's no drywall, there's no studs or anything like that. And then there's also the interior walls as well. So with this particular wall, if I take a look at it, you can see that the wall center line right here is the very middle of the wall. It doesn't really relate to, in this case, the concrete masonry unit or anything like that. It's just the very middle, mathematically, of the wall. And that's where, um, by default, you're locating it when you draw. But you also have the option of picking the finished face of the exterior, so that's the very outside face of the wall. You can do the finished face interior, so that's the face of generally the drywall on the inside. Or you can use one of the cores. So the core is the structural part of the wall, so you can locate by the face of the interior of the core, the face of the exterior of the core, or the center line of the core itself. So that's what those six different options are. When you're putting walls in, if I uh, grab wall and I'll use this exterior CMU. Okay, so if I come over here and maybe I'll uh, just draw a basic shape. Okay, go this way. and then I'll grab my modify tool. You can see that these walls have the brick on the outside, how I would probably want it, and this one has the brick on the inside of the, the room. If I click on that, uh, with the walls, you can use these little grips right here, these little arrows, to flip them back and forth. When you've located by the center line, if I flip that back and forth, you'll see, oh, you know, that looks correct now. The distance here from point to point remains 8 feet 10 inches, so the, uh, the actual shape, the geometry of your building, your room, whatever it is, stays the same. If I have this wall selected and I come over to the properties palette where it says location line, I can change that location line after I've drawn it. Um, if I change that maybe to finish face exterior, for example, and then I come over and click on this wall, if I flip it now, the room has gotten significantly smaller because it's no longer flipping around the wall center line, it's flipping against the face. So it'll make the room bigger or smaller depending on um, you know, which way you flip it. So that's very important in terms of how you work and how you think about your model. So sometimes it's not a bad idea to actually get the geometry how you want it, make sure the walls are all flipped the way you want them to be before you then go in and have it um, located by the finished face or the core or something like that. It depends how you work. Um, but that is the gist of the location lines and um, how they can impact your geometry.